Hi, and welcome to the SJ Childs Show. I'm your host, SJ Childs. SJ Childs Show brings value to families through education, resources, and lots of laughs. You can find us on our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and all of your favorite podcast platforms. You can also find our special children's books at sjchilds.org. Thank you for all of those who have hosted me on your podcasts. Enjoy the show. Hi, and welcome to the SJ Child Show. I'm your host, SJ Childs, and today's special guest is Carrie Smith. Carrie has a couple of websites that are based on family resources and just really great stuff for families, moms, and and kids. So please give a great big welcome to Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi, thank you, Sarah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. You know, we were talking before and we were talking about your really exciting programs and services that you have. One here in Utah, Utah Family Fun Stuff. I mean, that sounds so fun. Like, tell us what what we can find and things like that. You know, we do try to find unique activities and ideas. Sometimes they're um, the popular events, but sometimes they're pretty unique. Right now we have one where we went, um, did you know that you can go pick up antler sheds in the outdoors and the deer and that this time of year have their antlers have dropped off. You can pick those up and you can uh, sell those on eBay and whatnot for money. No kidding. So our family does that every year. And you know, it's, I'll be honest, it's not a huge money maker, but what about, that is the best hike because it's a treasure hunt while you're out there. Yeah. My kids have loved it. Even my non hikers loves it. And so we have really unique things like that. Plus the other day we went to a smash room. Have you heard of those? Yes. I want to do that. (laughs) Yes. We, my oldest son who loves it had the best time smashing a computer apart. (laughs) And so it was really fun. We vented and we posted, we made our, we made a reel that we posted on it and it's doing well. Apparently a lot of people are trying to, are looking for uh, outs and ways to vent their frustrations. Right. (laughs) Definitely. Definitely. So it, Uh, during the pandemic, were you finding a lot of more like maybe outdoor resources do instead of indoor things like that? Has that been a struggle for you guys or have you? Most most definitely we did outdoors. We, we took people to spiral jetty, which is in Northern Utah. If you've never been, um, we took them hiked on hikes with, uh, suspension bridges. When I say we took them, we posted pictures and we showed how to, you know, gave directions to the site and we shared our tips. Hey, we've been here. This is what you should know type thing. And it's it's doing really well, but we are starting to open up with the businesses. And so we're going indoors now too. Yeah, absolutely. And that's so nice too, because we're all kind of store crazy, I think. And we all need a yeah. little, a little break. So that sounds need to be away from the electronics, right? Yeah. Oh, the hundred yeah. percent. We need to break away from those and get out in the sunshine, get some fresh air, just, you know, move your body movement is life, <laughs> Make sure you're doing that, but you know, also engaging your mind and things. I think that you know, you're not only doing fun physical things, but those things are so mentally well on, on yourself, right? I often try to prepare, um, educational opportunities with the outings. We are, we have an upcoming fossil dig that we're going to be showing that any family can sign up for in Utah. And they have instructors along with the digs. They help you identify what you're finding. Oh, that's incredible. What you find. Wow. And so, Utah is unique that we have some dinosaur. Oh, uh, we are fossils. dinosaur gurus here. Yes. So we try to pair anything, even when visiting a chocolate factory, which you can do here locally. We talk about how as a family, we read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We watched both movies. We decided which one we liked better, which um, Gene Wilder won, by the way. Oh, great. <laughs> and then we went and we, we toured a real chocolate factory and ate chocolate after. So we show how to do those types of things, make it extra fun and educational. 
And what are some of the, um, what are some of the things your kids say about this? How, how are they feeling about all this fun stuff? You know, my, I have two kids. They're 10, they're eight, 10 years apart. I don't know if you knew that, but okay. there's a big gap, 18 years old. So he's technically now an adult. And then I have an eight year old. So I have to, I have a challenge finding activities that both of them are interested in. The oldest one is more interested in, in it from, you know, mom, how can we get the best photo angle of Mm. this? You know, he's interested in it from a a techie point of view. Whereas the youngest one is just woohoo. We're out of the house. Let's go. Yeah. Well, and that's so cool to see those two different perspectives, right? Yeah. I like that. I really like that. And especially when you're supporting and empowering your youth to do what they love, you know, not what we think they should do or supposed to do, but who they really are supporting who they are and their own special talents. I think that's great. And you have to try a variety of things to find what those talents are. I'm sure (laughs) I've hunted for years to find what he likes to do. Yeah. And, and, and just don't give up on that. Yeah, I agree. Don't give up on that a hundred percent because, you know, when we foster that kind of confidence in kids, they can maintain relationships. They can, you know, get better jobs in the future. Just all of those things are building blocks, right? Right. Well, and you know, when somebody asks you, so what have you been up to? And when you're, you respond, oh, nothing. Well, that's not much of a conversation starter. So, you know, give your kids experiences and you don't have to spend a lot of money, but provide opportunities so they can say, Hey, you know, this weekend we went on this really cool hike and that gives them something to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We, um, we also have a 21 year old. She is out of the home now, but we also have an 11 and a nine year old. So I, I hear what you're saying about kind of finding those, uh, interests in those age gaps, as well as really finding um, ways to engage your family on the activities and educating them. It, that's so fantastic. I am excited to, to see, especially the fossil dig. My little nine-year-old is a nice. dinosaur loving fossil guru. She is going to be nuts about it. <laughs> We're yes. And that's when it's open to the public. So stay tuned. It's um, you dig fossils that we're going to go out to Delta So it's, you know, and sometimes we find out through these activities, we find out things that we don't like to do. Yeah. And that's why is information to have too, isn't it? We are not the best ice skaters. (laughs) (laughs) We found that out this winter. Okay. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Well, and there wasn't probably, oh, at least you had an indoor ice skating rink, probably. We we did both. Oh, great. We did both. Yeah, we did indoor and outdoor. We liked the outdoor rink better, but we hugged the pole the whole way. And I am not the ice skater that I used to be. Yeah. I could barely help my boys. I was <laughs> I was so afraid of falling and breaking a wrist. <laughs> Absolutely. I can appreciate that. Yeah. You know, we rented a bounce house a few summers ago for like an, you know, out after school party kind of thing. And at the end of before we got rid of it, my husband and I had the greatest idea that we should go bounce for a little while. Holy moly. You don't know how old you are till you have bounced in a bounce house. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, did I compress everything a hundred percent? I can know moving the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Having (laughs) having children keeps you young. I say that all the time. It really does. Yeah. I so, agree. Yeah. So you do find out what you don't like to do and that's okay. Both of my boys, you know, you can't go through life saying I've never ice skated. Yeah. You've got to try it. Yeah, definitely. You know, what I'm looking forward to, to this summer is going up to park city and maybe doing a zip line or doing the slide, the Alpine slide. Yeah. Um, I, I would love to give my kids that experience. We're actually doing Park City in a couple of weeks. So oh, wonderful. We're just, yeah, you know, so we're going to stay in. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're uh, you know, spring break is a good time to try lots of fun things. And that's, of course, coming right up for those of us in Utah. And it goes on for a couple of weeks because the school districts are staggered. Yeah. Um, but we don't head down to southern Utah like everyone else does, even though that's sunny. Uh, we actually avoid that because that's where all the crowds are. So yeah. we'll take you to the, all the other places and show you some cool things to do. 
Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And um, the West Desert, I mean, that's a fantastic place to go it's treasure hunting out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. My husband loves, loves the desert. And if you have any photography skills, it's so heavenly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. We definitely have those in our family. So yeah, good. Yeah. Good. So we're, we're going to have to catch up on all these great activities. Well, I have learned from the, my followers. They all have really great ideas. So we kind of <sighs> brainstorm everyone's ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. Um, we were also talking about your other website because I, feel like at first my family, I'm the wordsmith of my family too. So I love that you have that in Mrs. Lady Wordsmith, right? That's amazing. Well, my last name is Smith too. Okay, that's perfect. So I had to put that, I wanted to be Mrs. <laughs> wordsmith, but that domain was going to cost a bajillion dollars. <laughs> so then I added lady yes. um, and there's a story behind that. My uncle, whenever he talks to his wife and he's a little frustrated with her, he'll say, lady, and so I've always, I've always, but you know, and I, and I just think it's such a charming term. We don't yeah. hear it as much anywhere. It might sound a little old fashioned, but it encourages followers to be nice to one another. And it reminds me to be a lady and to be nice to one another. I like so that. I, I like adding lady. Yeah. I really like that a lot. That's, that's very um, encouraging and uplifting. What are some types of things that you have on that website? You know, I really have a big heart for struggling readers. It's not something that I personally re relate to, but I grew up with a father who struggles to read. And I cannot imagine my life without my nose in a book at least once a day. And I've come across a lot of kids who just don't like to read. And so I take that as a personal challenge when I meet them. I've been an avid tutor in schools um, and I've been a substitute teacher for Title I children who need extra help. So I've done this over a period of several years and I've made some really cute fun games and they're on my website, they're printables that you can use. One of them is adorable that you put uh, the spelling words on these cute little cards that have um, cartoon insects on them. Mm. And you take a fly swatter and you smack the spelling words as you <laughs> say the list. and. And that way you can play that in a number of ways. You know, you can do that as a matching game or you can just do that one as they're identifying the word and learning to spell the word and it makes it more kinesthetic Interactive. learning. Yes, yes, I love that. Yeah. So and that's one game that I like to do, but I have several sight word activities and games. That. And it's really important for in this process, as I'm sure you know, especially as a, being a teacher and having worked with children, finding each child's individual learning style is so Absolutely. important. You know, add an audio book if your kid's yes. an auditory, auditory learner. Exactly. Let them watch a video. If they learn better through watching a video, there's no yeah. harm in that, especially in our digital age, uh, not to discount wonderful reading of books, but, you know, we have to accommodate all the different types of neurodiversity in our community now. Yes. You know, long before, and I was, uh, this was ages ago, but my sister and I growing up in a small town. The library had a section with some audio for, for those who were uh, sight impaired. Mm -hmm. And my sister doesn't love to read. There's no reason why she can't. She just doesn't love it. And so whenever she had book reports due in school, ba way back in the 70s, 80s, <laughs> she, Tape was that she was checking out the books for the blind. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's, she discovered early on that that worked for her, but that's, something that she did that is now very common. We all have yeah. our audible books. I she think went, she so was smart ahead of, her. of the time. Yes, it sounds like it a hundred percent, you know, and I think that now, you know, our kind of generations moving forward, we're kind of having, we, we all have a different perception of things, right? And we, now we have a kind of a bigger perception of maybe some more neurodiverse topics uh, that we're, you know, more comfortable with nowadays in our, in our life. So um, for example, I have a husband and a daughter with dyslexia. So I'm I totally understand that struggle with, with reading and, you know, with spelling and watching kind of the way my husband has programmed himself to, you know, strategize around those areas. It, it's so incredible how we can train ourselves to get through life, isn't it? 
those coping skills. And so many students go undiagnosed with that. That's actually another step in my life is to, to be certified to, to diagnose this disorder. So many of the I love children, that you said that. So many of the children that I've tutored, there's something more going on than yeah. just study, study, study. That's yeah. not what's going on. 100%. There's just a little hiccup in the way their brain is wired and we just need to teach them in a different way. Absolutely. No, I love that you said that because my daughter, um, is, is nine when she was going through a charter school in first and second grade, I had brought up to the teacher, Hey, you know, I, I think that she's struggling in her reading and writing. Can you test her for dyslexia just to double check, you know, and, oh yeah, we will, we will. And then we talk to him. Oh, she's fine. She's so bright. She's so no, smart. And away. no, she, you know, she's so friendly and emotionally intelligent. That's great. Except that, that, that doesn't have anything to do, have nothing to do with it. So no. I, I applaud commend you for getting into di- the diagnostic process, because I think that that's what teachers schools, that's what they struggle with. They yeah. don't know when they get up against that, instead of delving in for more education or resources, they just turn it off, turn a blind eye to it, say, sorry, I don't, I don't know how to help any more than that. So that's it. They don't readily employ experts yeah. who have the, they have uh, reading experts that share three and four schools. Yeah, that's tough. So it is important for parents, if you suspect that, to go and get a reading diagnosis, uh, pursue yes. that on your own. Yes. I was tutoring a child privately, actually, she was a teen. And I was pretty darn sure she had dyslexia and the mom had never had her tested. And I, I encouraged that and she, she very much tested yes. for it. And, but, and she was so relieved to know that it yeah. wasn't her fault. Yes, exactly. It's so important to, to let them know, because when we educate our kids about their own selves, they're able to become more confident, more empowering people on their own, you know, more conflict resolution, all of those things tie in to our confidence in our self-esteem levels. You just needed to learn some, some reading yeah. tricks. And, and when what we worked on, when we brought our daughter home this year, and homeschooled that exactly what I did. You know, I've been on Utah online school with my son for about five years now, um, because his, uh, education levels are, they have different needs to them. So we've been able to adapt all of that through, through this wonderful program. But I knew that these teachers and these special education group would be on my side. You know, they wouldn't question me. They know a hundred percent that I, they trust me. So when I said she has dyslexia, please test her, please get her tutoring. It wasn't, it was like that week, two, two tutorings a week. She's already catching up to where she needs to be. And it's just amazing. The efforts that when these teachers put the efforts in the resilience, these children can have. Yes. And I cannot say enough about finding books that your child is interested in so reading. True. Hunt down the library. Don't, don't think that they're picking up all their favorite books at the school because they aren't all the time. Sometimes children don't know where to look for their favorite book. If you know that they love unicorns, you go to the library and you hunt down every unicorn book they have. You know, I like <laughs> that you said that. And it kind of reminds me of something that is, is just realistic. And that is that if you, if your child likes something that you don't like, don't discourage it, like encourage them to have their own interests and likes. I remember when my 21 year old was growing up, um, she loved anime. She loved comics, things like that. I hated them. (laughs) I could not stand it. I didn't understand why she liked it. And I was always, no, this isn't reading. You can't no, no, no. It was always just this back and forth. And boy, I learned my lessons. Believe me. I'm I'm, I'm raising children. When did you repent? (laughs) (laughs) Within the last five years. (laughs) Yes. And luckily, you know, we have an amazing relationship and she, she knew that I was, I'm her stepmom, And I literally put in, I mean, just all of my heart, all of my effort, all of my time to raise her the best that I could as my own child. And she knows that she knows that the tough love that I gave her wasn't out of dislike or, you know, it was out of love and strength. Yes. And, but now also I see all the errors in my ways in all the controlling things and who cares if they want to color their hair, people 
let them do it. Hair does not matter. Like (laughs) those are the kinds of things I should have let go and not put up so many fights because, you know, now she's older and now she's experimenting in all of those areas. And I should have let her do those as a teenager and, you know, as a young adult. I'll be honest. I (laughs) I have an easy teen. But he doesn't share my passion for reading. So I got to work, you know, yeah, I, every yeah. once in a while I sneak in something to try I to, love that. We, I read with, I've read with both kids because they're so far apart. And so I've, we're working our way through the Laura Ingalls Wilder series. I oh, read nice. that to my oldest and now I'm, my youngest is very interested in it. So, you know, you just pick those and I don't, we, you, there, we've had several books that we've picked up that my youngest, you know, a couple chapters and he's not into it. And we have, he knows that he has full on permission to just say, mom, let's find another book. And we do. It's okay to start and stop books. It's okay. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. That's really great. Tell us the, where we can find both of your websites to get more information. All right. Well, and I also have an online book club. So if anyone out there, I, it is just for the ladies. Okay. It's called the ladies book club and that's available on Facebook. We're having a really good time there. And, um, we, we try to focus on clean books, not putting junk in our minds. Nice. And, uh, you know, you get a New York times bestseller. Some of that's going to creep in anyway, but we try to, you know, help each other find really good books that are meaningful and lead to a meaningful discussion. Um, so the, where to find, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, a little bit on YouTube, but if you go to utahfamilyfunstuff.com, that's my website it has all the social media links. And if you go to Mrs. Lady wordsmith.com, that has all the social le- media links as well. Great. And, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just the more the merrier. I'm, I learn a lot from moms who who teach me things. And I, I have a professional writing and editing background. I worked for uh, 20 years um, in office as well as freelancing. So it's uh, a passion. I, I yeah. don't just say that I'm a wordsmith lightly. I <laughs> literally have all the grammar rules memorized. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So I'm happy to be of help. It's my one little talent that I offer I to it. the world. <laughs> it's so funny you say that too, because my family had, they tease me a lot because I, I think mine came from, I mean, I've always loved writing. I've always loved poetry and words and all of that. But I was also a paralegal for about 10 years and different types of of law. But at one point I did uh, um, employment law and I had to read and edit like Intel's employee manual. (laughs) You know how many pages that is? And so, yeah, after being and, you know, doing that kind of work for so long, I can't even read for fun anymore. I literally just edit everything. I, I am always reading constantly and just criti- I don't edit criticizing, but <laughs> I don't edit people's texts or email. You, I tell all my friends, I'm not editing your text. <laughs> Thank it's you. Yeah, definitely. And I make plenty too. Cause you know, fat fingers make mistakes. Oh my gosh. Voice text. It's not sure if I'm from Mississippi, New York, California, it has no idea where I live. No. And so I just sound like a whole, you know, it's like an educated ghetto yeah. lady. So <laughs> that's nothing. Uh, yeah, we can't put too much uh, pressure on ourselves there. Can we? <laughs> no, no. Well, it's such a great time talking to you today, Carrie, and I'm excited to keep our connection and follow up with one another, see how things are going. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to do this family fun. fun. That'd be fun. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I'll have, make sure to have all the links for the websites down in the description below and, uh, yeah, uh, thank you. And we will be in touch. Thanks so much. Yeah, Carrie. Any questions. I'm always available. Wonderful. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. kind of guy that keeps
Kiss you warm at night when you are cold. I'll grab some blankets from my bed, wrap them around your chest. Now pull you close. We'll flip some channels to find out there's nothing on right now to ease your mind. Sit back, relax. There is no rush. No need to speed things up. All we have is. Sunsets, I won't let you forget that I, I need you. Spring comes, and spring goes forever. You will know that I, I love you. 